All right, 603, and the heavy winds and driving rains from Hurricane Earl have reached North Carolina's Outer Banks and are starting to be felt in southeastern Virginia. So, a lot of things look right now along the coast here in southern New England. Well, live Witness News reporter Sean Daly continues our live pinpoint weather team coverage. He's live on Block Island this morning. Hey, Sean. Patrick and Elizabeth, funny, Patrick, that you should use that exact language. How do things look? How do things look? This is how they look. Let's take a moment to just enjoy this sunrise. It looks spectacular. Never mind all of the rest of this and never mind the waves and the hurricane. Just for the moment, soak in the sun. Here she comes. Here comes another day. And we will, of course, be reporting on it all day long as we see how Hurricane Earl plays out. But for the moment, it's just magical here, looking east, of course, here on Block Island. We talked to some people yesterday as they were leaving Block Island and preparing if Hurricane Earl were to have hit sometime early, potentially, or who knows. So these were boaters and other people getting ready and other people just getting out. Take a look. With the clock ticking ever loudly, workers raced to beat it, hauling boats out of the water until nightfall knowing full well that at first light, there they'll go again. If it had been declared a hurricane three days ago, we'd have more out by now. That's it. So now it's a race against it time. Until tomorrow morning, yeah. This family motored back in their dinghy after securing their 33-foot cruiser on a mooring with plenty of line to account for a storm surge. This isn't our first rodeo, son. We've been through this before. No problems. Spoken from experience? Yes. Uh, almost 40 years out there, so... I'm good. At the ferry landing, we checked in with some of the last people who caught the last boat out, maybe until after Earl comes and goes. The last boat out. You're on it. I'm really worried. I hope that everything goes well. This is the last boat, and I'm on it. But tomorrow, if nothing happens, I'll be really sad that I left. So you're of a mixed mind. I am. I am. And I hate to leave this place, but, I mean, I'm scared at the same time, you know? Fear is an understandable emotion, but now there's a slightly different twist on that last boat out thought, and let's clarify here. It was the last boat out last night, and as I reported there, what may be the last boat out until Earl comes and goes. The key word there was may. We now know that the governor's office is saying that the ferry may run today whether conditions permitting and that's the key qualifier there it's still not known yet whether the ferry will run today but we do know now in the last hour or so we've heard through this morning's conference call which included the governor's office that there is now the very real possibility that the ferry will run sometime today for as long as the ferry can run today the coast guard interestingly has closed all of the ports in rhode island but that Closure has included the exception of the Black Island Ferry. So that's the latest here from Black Island. Patrick and Elizabeth? All right, John, thanks. From Black Island, we're going to move now to Narragansett, where Eyewitness News reporter Danielle North has a look at the conditions there. Danielle? Elizabeth, first of all, I want to say thank you to Sean Daly for stealing my moment in the sun this morning. It is such a beautiful sunrise. Hard to believe that. You know, in a few short hours from now, it's going to be quite cloudy and the rain and the wind are going to be moving in there. I'm going to step aside so you can see where we are right now. We are actually at Hazard Rock, which is off of Hazard Road in Narragansett. And it was really only a few short days ago that we were here to witness pretty much a tragedy when a Lowell man actually fell into the water. He was trying to rescue several family members who have been swept away by a huge wave. I'm going to have my photographer actually pan to the left here so you can see one of the areas of concern. You're looking at what people kind of call the washing machine effect where you can see the waves start to actually swirl and circle around and sometimes you get a six to eight foot wave that comes crashing unexpectedly. So certainly this is an area of concern. A lot of people like to come watch Mother Nature, watch the waves, take pictures, but there are already warning signs posted along the top of Hazard Rock here warning people to try to stay away as things begin to pick up here. We want to take a look at some uh, video of the waves and water that was shot yesterday afternoon. And we have learned that some coastal residents have already left their summer homes. 
before the traditional end to the summer season, which of course we know is Labor Day. And in some cases, like in South Kingstown, there have been voluntary evacuation orders in effect since late yesterday afternoon. You know, not a bad idea to pack a bag, you know, uh, uh, fill up the car with gas, uh, know what evacuation routes you might have to take, uh, and beware of uh, any of the local shelters if you need those. And now you're looking at uh, some information about a shelter that's been set up in South Kingstown at 215 Columbia Street. For those who may need a place to stay following the, the voluntary evacuation, and as we take you back live here to Narragansett, we can tell you that the governor has, of course, closed all state beaches today. So certainly things are going to be quiet here as far as the crowds are concerned. We, of course, will stay on top of things here along the shoreline and bring you the latest in about a half hour. For now, we're live in Narragansett with the Mobile Newsroom. I'm Danielle North, Eyewitness News.